So the last okay. thing that I would want to do is just be diving in my sort of you know magnificent gold speedo and suddenly have <laughs> like a barracuda. You may be attracted my, um, to your gold speedo. Gold coin. <laughs> 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 What's going on guys, Waco and Jeremiah Chan from Revolution. And Jeremiah, today I want to talk about a brand called Nevada Gretchen. Yeah, it's a pretty cool brand, which I think it's unfortunately been lost to the sands of time, yeah. but has but been we're... recently revived. Correct, yeah. exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I, okay, let's talk about the revive brand first, you know, and I think okay. that everything that the two owners, uh, Guillaume Ledet and Remy Chabrat are doing right now, is an amazing example for me for a great value proposition coupled by fantastic, historically accurate design. I mean, mm -hmm. the watches are just kicking ass. Right, right. and instantly, Guillaume was the one that revived Volcano as well. Exactly. We talked yes. about earlier. Exactly. He was a very busy man. Exactly. Um, but okay, let's go back into the history of uh, Nevada Grandchild. So the brand uh, was founded in 1926, mm -hmm. and by 1930, it established itself as uh, creating some really cool watches. In particular, a watch called Antarctic, which mm -hmm. was uh, used by the U.S. Navy team that was exploring the South Pole. Right? All right. The deep team. Freeze. Deep, oh, deep freeze, freeze one. Deep freeze one. <laughs> deep Sorry. freeze one. Exactly. My words so this, jumbled up. Precisely. So, so these guys uh, were wearing these watches, and they performed incredibly well throughout this period as well. I believe the the admiral was in charge of yeah, deep Admiral freeze. Bird. Yeah. Admiral Bird yeah. with deep freeze one said that it was like you know sleeted on, rained on, snowed on. Uh, in these time, uh, the term is uh, road rough and put away wet. Um, but at the same time, the watch just continued to perform. Uh, let's flash forward a little bit, and actually, Nevada Grenchen is one of the creators of the first commercially produced waterproof chronograph, mm -hmm. right? And this is called the Chronomaster. Actually, there's a Chron longer name yeah. for Chronomaster it. Chronomaster Aviator Sea Diver. Chronomaster I think they wanted to make, uh, make a watch diver. that could do anything. For if, if you're diving, if you're you <laughs> flying, know, flying, if you're yeah. landing your sea plane on the water and right. leaping out of the door directly into the ocean in your scuba yeah. outfit, you're going to have the right watch. <laughs> yeah. And what was amazing to me is that I, I believe it's, uh, it's a retailer at the time boasted even that this watch, which was 200 meters water resistant, mm. that you could operate the chronograph pushers underwater at 660 right. feet, which I was like, Really? Right, that's 200 meters, I think. Yeah, right. precisely, to the full uh, water resistance of the watch. I'm not sure if that was actually possible because mm -hmm. that, that's quite extraordinary. Because I can't even think of that many watches today that have chronographs on them that you can use underwater yes. at that depth, yes, let alone exactly. in, say, a jacuzzi, you know? Exactly. <laughs> True. <laughs> Marginally no, I, submerged. And it, it also had pump pushes, if I'm, if I'm not And it had pump yeah, pushes as well, thing, so there's yeah. no screw-down mechanism. But I think the point was it was a demonstration that when Nevada Grinch had built something, it built it with a huge right. focus on quality, right? right. Um, so then, in 1964, it launched its first uh, dive watch called the Depthomatic. Yes. And that was a that very was interesting a watch because it was the first mechanical watch that was commercially produced that actually incorporated a, uh, De a depth, depth gauge. gauge. Well, let me see if I get this right. It's called a Borden tube device. Yes. Right? So the Borden tube is named after its inventor, Eugene Borden. And it's basically a tube that is located within the watch that allows water to enter the case. And obviously, when you're at depth, you experience a certain level of pressure. That pressure will deform the tube. And that's how you can then have the reading off of the depth. So to follow up with the Depthmatic, in 1965, Nevada Grenchen launches this incredible watch yeah. called the Depth Master. Mm -hmm. And mastery it did in fact create because from 1965 to 1967, this particular watch boasted the deepest diving watch around and available on the planet. At a thousand meters. All the way that's insane to me. Thousand meters water resistance in the context of 1965 is nuts because mm -hmm. even then, like to have 200 meters water resistance or even 300 meters of water resistance, yeah. you know, was considered to be a hell of a lot, right? But then Nevada Grenchen just sort of like ups the game completely. You know, mm -hmm. it does this huge sort of submersible mic drop where right. it's like, okay, guys, <laughs> we're gonna go to 1,000 yeah. meters. Yeah, and they did it just by making a better watch, right? A thicker sapphire crystal, thicker that, case back. That's it. You know, what's really cool is uh, is the watch that was introduced in 1965 didn't feature a helium release valve, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it, and when I asked Guillaume, it's like, well, in that case, how do they, you know, assure the depth rating to 1,000 meters? He said, listen, they just built a better watch, as you said, yeah. right? So yeah. what I like about it, when they re release the watch, they actually incorporated a helium release valve into the watch yeah. as well, it's just to give kind you... Kind of like a throwback, I think. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it was kind of like if a certain company didn't have a patent on that technology, ah. at the time, they would have probably incorporated right. it, and so they've incorporated it here. Right. But, but you probably but, wouldn't use it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's for saturation diving. Time. I can't even, you know, <laughs> sort of dive to more than three meters anyway, right. you know? Um, um, the, 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 the hot tub is my <laughs> area <laughs> of deepest submersion. <laughs> so anyway, the point is that um, we were really charmed by Nevada Grenchen's history, mm -hmm. and we decided that we wanted to work on a watch with Guillaume and Remy. 
However, the watch that we're holding in our hands was not the watch that we initially started with. Oh, really? With. Yeah, okay. it was, so, so, you know, as you know, I really love blacked out chronographs, right? Um, and there's two watches in particular that I love, uh, one which celebrates the 50th anniversary mm. this year, the 1972 Porsche design chronograph by Orfina. For the then uh, Alexander Porsche. Yeah, Bootsy right? Porsche. Yeah, Bootsy Porsche. Exactly, and that was the world's first blacked out chronograph, uh, and I thought that watch was really incredible. And incidentally, um, I guess that watch was on my mind because they just re-released a 50th anniversary version of the chronograph one, which was a great watch. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, Tag Heuer released this year an homage to their watch that they created in 1974, the Tag Heuer Monaco Dark Lord, yeah. right? right? And I guess it was just on my mind. So when I started looking at Nevada Grenchen watches, I was looking specifically at the Chronomaster and a specific execution of the Chronomaster called the Orange Boy, okay. which is just great. It's right. got like, you know, orange uh, graphics. It's got a big orange chronograph hand on it. It was just cool. Very indicative of like 70s style. Like. Totally. And then I was like, dude, if we did a blacked out version of this, this watch is going to rock. Okay. And we are going to do that watch. However, yeah. it, okay. but not immediately. Because as soon as I said that, uh, Guillaume Ledet started laughing and he's like, dude, I want to show you something. So he basically reached into his pocket and extracted a prototype of this watch, right? Wow. And I'm like, dude. Even before you brought it? <laughs> wow. Exactly. Apparently we were on the same uh, wavelength and he's mm. like, he I always wanted to do a blacked out version of the Death Master, right? And a very specific Death Master. One of the coolest things about that watch is that certain configurations came with indexes that were totally unique, right? They were hyper stylized. The 12 had a kind of a pyramid made shape to it. Yes. And the three, six, and nine actually are reminiscent of characters from the video game Pac-Man. Right. right. Do you know why that is? Well, I mean, you know, if you look at the dial and you guys take a close look at it, you'll see that these indexes, mm -hmm. in fact, do seem to replicate uh, um, the figures from Pac-Man, even right. though, of course, this was created many decades before Pac-Man right. was actually introduced. But because of that, collectors have now given this watch the nickname the Pac-Man. Right? So probably maybe Nevada was thinking they needed to have a more distinctive style for the 3, 6, and 9 markers, so they didn't want to have it round, right? Well, I think that's the cool thing about it is that every one of the markers is different. And, mm -hmm. you know, with most dive watches, it's round plots, as you mentioned as exactly. well. So when you're in the dark, submerged, they all essentially look the same and the mm. orientation of your arm can get confused. True. Whereas this way, with the 12, with the 3, with the 6, and the 9, all completely different in these really interesting creative deco fonts, there's right. no way you can ever get confused, right? right. I think there's also another interesting story with how you uh, came up with the shade of the loom. Yes. Right. Well, okay, so let's say that uh, what is the idea behind a black diving watch, right? I was asking you this before. In history, no one's really been making mm -hmm. blacked out diving watches. Right. Uh, you know, I think the first black diving watches that we saw were probably from the 90s, in kind a of pre-Vendome era Panerai mm. um, that was still being sold in the original shop in Florence. Right. But they weren't really watches that were used for diving, and they certainly were not the watches that were being used back in the day by the Italian Navy, yeah. right? They were just kind of cool looking because they're black. Actually, a strong black coating on a dive watch has mm. a lot of advantages. Right. First of all, it offers up an additional layer of corrosion resistance. Yep. Second of all, it kind of allows you to focus completely on the dial. Third of all, I was always told, and you know, I'm kind of paranoid about the ocean, right? Okay. That if you wear a shiny object like a wristwatch, it can attract one of the most deadly species of fish to you, known as the barracuda. Really? Yeah, apparently okay. they're attracted by shiny objects and okay. get confused because apparently they're the, their the prey. prey. It looks ah, like that I as see. well. So the last okay. thing that I would want to do is just be diving in my sort of, you know, magnificent gold speedo and suddenly have <laughs> like a barracuda. They may be attracted to your gold speedo. Gold coin. <laughs> <laughs> That could be worse. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I think it would be a cool idea in the context of this, this model. Let's do a blacked out version mm. of it. And then we went the whole way and actually did a, a blacked out Beads and Rights bracelet as well. Made wow. Like, uh, Fosters, who, who we love, right? right. Um, but you're absolutely right. Then we were trying to decide on what the specific color of the loom should be. Mm. Um, we didn't want to sort of, uh, you know, veer too far into that realm known as is it Fotina? Fotina, right? Where we yeah. make it look so much like age vintage tritium mm. that it's a little bit farcical. But at the same time, when you have a purely black watch, black dial, you kind of need a little bit of a punch of color to it. And so it was funny because we decided then, Guillaume and I would go do what we do best. Uh, uh, go was, for a drink. Go for a drink, <laughs> exactly. So we retreated to the Irish pub that's around the corner from okay. my house in the old town of Geneva. And we both ordered automatically a pint of Guinness. Mm. And as we're holding the Guinness pints and we're looking at the watch, we're like, these, this beer is giving us precisely the correct color palette reference because it should be the blackness of the, of the beer itself 
should be representative of the case and the dial, but mm -hmm. then the foam, the head of the plane of Guinness, which ah, is very famous, gave us the idea for this light creamy color for the indexes. Oh, that's cool, that's cool sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but of course, we wanted to make it a contemporary watch. So what's really cool about this watch also is that even though it looks like, you know, kind of vintage tritium, it's actually incredibly reactive Super Lunima Nova that glows incredibly bright and I love the fact that you've got <laughs> that's gonna last for hours dude look at that you've got the inverted triangle for your zero uh, minutes for your dive markers and then you've got all the dive markers from 15 onwards um, that are luminous as well you've got the major other indexes on the bezel that are luminous and then you've got that dial with the pac-man like indexes mm -hmm. and check that out hour hand minute hand but also full seconds hand yeah also the whole length of the hand. loom to the max man I mean this watch is you know just blazing away in the dark which I really love and I love the fact that, you know, Nevada Grenchen is able to put such a cool watch in such an accessible package. Right. I mean, this is a watch that's costing under $1,000, 990 90, US yeah. dollars. Yeah. It's got a Swiss made so proud movement in there, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's phenomenal value from my perspective and it's great on the wrist as well. This modern version is 39 mm in diameter mm -hmm. um, and it uses, instead of PVD like they did back in the 70s, it's using DLC for the case, which yes. is, tell diamond us like It's diamond-like carbon coating. I mean, both processes are used in the watch industry widely, uh, but PVD is, you know, the name stands for physical vapor deposition. It's a process where a combination of metals are vaporized and then in a vacuum environment, they stick uh, or uh, yeah, they stick to the surface. Um, DLC is a variation of the PVD process, but instead of using that uh, metals, they use, uh, I mean, carbon is used actually. So as the name suggests, diamond-like carbon, and you know, we all know that diamonds are made of carbon atoms, right? It's a much more robust and durable finish uh, and even more scratch resistant than PVD. Phenomenal. And all that in a package that costs 990 US dollars. I think I'd say it's a pretty killer watch, man, and it's a great value. So, uh, you know, ah, and it also comes with a second yes. strap as well. So check that yes. out. So if you don't want to wear the Beads of Rice blacked out um, DLC bracelet as well, you can put it on this lovely calf strap that we've um, spec for you as well. And just to ensure that every detail is on point, we've even made sure that the pin buckle is mm. also DLC, DLC as well, so it matches steel. precisely. So that's it, guys. A great value proposition, a handsome watch, a watch that you can wear submerged and without any fear of barracudas attacking <laughs> you because it's all blacked out. And, right. and as a testament to that, we have on the back case of the watch. Oh, yes. Relief engraved a barracuda that has been crossed out, kind yeah. of like the old no radiation symbols. Right, oh yeah, the old blanc pants, yes. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. An old blanc pants with the pants. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Which we, you know, it's a little wink to uh, the history of the dive watch and we mm. think it's really cool. So there you go, guys. Um, great dive watch for you to wear. And I can pretty much guarantee that you will not be attacked by barracudas wearing it. Stay safe in the oceans. Stay very safe <laughs> in the ocean. Gold Speedo or no Gold Speedo. <laughs> Thanks, Wade. Thanks, sir.